Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another episode on our chat app. And in this episode, we are going to run through this list of activities. So the first one is resolving the login experience. And yeah, I will, I will show this when we start up the front-end server and just explore the experience. And also implement the logout. Yeah, I think we have a function to handle logout on the front-end. However, since, when, since whenever we log in, kind of register users on the, the back end. So when we load out to it, makes sense to remove the, the logged in users from the um, back end. So that is what we're going to work on. And finally, we are going to fetch users so that we can start chatting with other users. And yeah, I think we need to do some adjustments on our back end before we actually start with any of these flows. All right, so let's get onto it and kick it off. Right, so here is the back end and so from the last episode we made a modification to our authentication um, module so this is authenticated custom and as a result of that all our tests broke so one of the things I forgot was after making this modification I actually did not test so as a result uh, the test broken without my knowledge so now I've done um, I've run over all our tests and I've resolved this and let me just quickly show us where the issues lie. So initially we were using a method called false authentication to authenticate a user. However, since we've implemented this custom method, it now requires us to have this content available before making any permis uh, permission related requests. So what I've done to resolve this is I actually logged in the user. So let's take this as an, as an example. So I created the sender user. As a result, the user exists and I created the profile as well. And with that, I can now log in the user using the same payload I used to create the user. Then after logging in the user, I set the bearer information. So this is what the bearer information looks like. So HTTP authorization, VERA, then the access token. Then after doing this, so take note, this is self as uh, this is set as an attribute of the test message class. And since it's an attribute of the test message class, I can try use it among or uh, within all the methods in the class. So take the test post uh, message as an as an example. So we are posting. We are posting a message and for every post we need to be authenticated and all we need to just do is to spread out the authorization object so take note this is an object already as per javascript and um, uh, content but it's a dictionary in python so i'll use the word dictionary in this case so dict all right so i spread out the dict here and that's all we need to do to actually resolve that so that's done. So the next thing we want to work on as per our activities. So I think we should start with implementing the login um, endpoint and the logout endpoints. Then we can now move on to resolving the profile endpoints. Okay. So we can go back to the user control and implement the log logout endpoint. And what we really want to just do on the logout is to so if we go back to the models, there is a particular module here that model that handles the logged in user. So here is it. So users and stuff. So as soon as we log out, we need to remove that user from here so that it's no longer recorded as logged in user. Right? So if we go back to the views, and for this, since we are just literally creating a single request, which is going to be a get requests i think yeah it's going to be a get request so let's let's just copy what we have with the me view so we have logout view and it's going to take the api view so it's also going to take on the permission class so literally the 
we are going to call on this endpoint before we remove all those information from the front end. So we actually don't want to remove any information unless this returns a true or more like a success result for us. All right, so we don't need this realizer for this. All right, so now we can create a death request and we can create a get request. So self then request. So to get access to the logged in user, we just need the user ID, which is equals to request dot user dot id. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to access the JWT model and remove the user if it exists. So to do that, we have access to the model already here. So we just do JWT dot objects dot filter into so let's take a look at what that entails yeah user id into user underscore id equals to user id the one you just obtained from here then if the user exists you just want to delete it and so after doing that you just want to return a response that the whole process was successful and yeah, let's just say logged out. All right, so here is our logged out successful uh, message. So all we can do is we can write our test for this. It's a simple method, but it's worth it. So I'll do that um, later on. I don't think I want to use that to delay anything. So the next thing I want to undo is the the resolve profile endpoint. So what I mean here is currently on the user profile endpoints. So initially, I removed this uh, intervention class. I've gone ahead to return it back. So currently now, this will return every user irrespective of who is even making up the request. So one of the things we want to do is if you are trying to get, so if you are trying to fetch user from the user profile, then you shouldn't fetch the logged in user, the person making the request and it shouldn't fetch the admin user. So we currently have an admin on the uh, system. So that person, that admin should not be fetched as well. So let's undo those. And yeah, to do this, we need to identify the method we're actually making. Because we don't want to interfere with this process when we are posting or updating our, pro our, our profile. Because what will happen if we did not consider the method, like the get method, then what happens is that when we try to update our profile, then it won't even recognize us. So that is the reason why we need to consider the method. Yeah, and to check the method, all we need to do is to have something called requests, or rather self.request, since we don't have access to request directly here. To self.request, then method. So method, yeah, so that's all we need to know. So usually it's going to be like comparing capitalized uh, form. However, I like things to be in small letter and just to be safe. So I will do this as lower. And that way I can now compare if it's post or get or that. All right. So we are still going to get back to that later on. All right. So take note if we are posting or if we are updating or if we are deleting, I guess we just want to return the query set. We really don't want to do any other thing. So let's just say if so if self dot method is get, then do a specific thing, or rather let's say if self dot gets if if request the method the lower is not so not equivalent to get then we just want to return return self dot query set all right so what we are doing is if it posts if it's updates or if it's delete then return the query set however if it's the get so unless we undo for the we making sash and other things then we can 
go on with our regular flow. Alright, so the first thing we want to actually consider here, so here we've considered if it's keyword. However, this is not even a complete content because here is just handling if it's keyword. However, there's possibility of it being something else of uh, like we query something and maybe we want to get a, a particular user and stuff like that is possibility so what we can do is we can actually do have this as a pop so that it's no longer within the data and after having that as a pop we can further have a filter here then we can spread the data so that means it's going to filter all other query parameters we've specified here okay and finally on the on the keyword section we want to exclude so we want to exclude if the user id is equivalent to the registered user id and um, the requester actually so it should be self dot request dot user underscore id or other user dot id i think that's that works best all right so i'll bring this down so that's the first exclude so the second exclude is we want to know that the user is not a super user so to verify this let's go back to the model and on our user model we have the is super user there so we want to ensure that it's a false so to do that, you can say user underscore underscore because this is currently on the user profile. So we want to access the user and a field under the user. So we use the underscore underscore. So currently now we're on the user. So with the underscore underscore, we're accessing the field, the field under the user model. So the field we want to undo is the is super user. And we want to ensure that we want to exclude if it's true. All right, so this exclude will not work because we are considering two things. So to make this work, we need an all kind of information. So if, <clears throat> if the user ID is the ID of the requester, then we want to exclude it. Or if the uh, user we are currently on is the super user we want to exclude it as well so to do this we need an import so here is the import we need from django.db.models we want to import q and with q available the next thing we can do is we can have this so it can now be q into the first condition then her so your single bar line, single bar, not line, a bar line. So I think single bar is just enough. So then you have the second queue. So now with this condition, now we are specifying that if the user ID is the ID of the requester, then it should ignore that particular user. Also, if the user is a super user, you should ignore it as well. All right, so that's the case for this keyword so we also want to have um the default case so in case there is no keyword then we can just copy and paste so let's just copy all of this and replace with this so the only thing we want to just change here is remove this first filter all right and that should undo it so to be sure that we are still working with the right thing and everything is still okay, let's run our tests. So I will write the test for the logout as soon as I close the screen. So Python manage.py tests. All right, so there is an issue. So line 135. Right, so I guess that was disjointed. So exclude. All 
right? So let's test it again. I guess the content was disjointed. Oh, okay. I guess it still comes up. Oh, okay. Okay, that was the first one. I guess it was actually disjointed. So that was the first one. So let's have this second one as well. Let's join it back together. All right, so let's run the test again. All right, so I guess it was disjointed. All right, so we got an error. So test user search. Okay, this. And I think this error was literally maybe. Well, I'm not, I'm curious. Let's, let's find out. So the result length is not one. However, we got 200. That's weird. So let's see what the result actually printed out. Oh, okay. So the result actually printed out an empty array. All right. So I just realized something. I think we were actually correct all along. So what happened is the first user is the one making the request to search for the users. So that's the user we logged in with and we are trying to get the user. So I, I actually think it makes more sense. So we can't get that user because the user should not exist. So the user actually exists, but he shouldn't return it since he's the one making the request. So I think that's okay. So one of our valid stuff and um, valid assertion should now be, this should be zero and that should be all. Okay. Yeah, I think that should be it. So let's run the test once more and push what we have. All right, so our test is successful. And I think one more thing we need to do is to actually link this logout URL. So we just define it within link it here. So all done here on the back end, so we can push and deploy what we have, then focus on the front end. All right, so we are back into the front end and yeah, let's just log in with our user and ensure that what we have so far is still working. All right, so that looks good. Okay, so the first, so going back to our list, so we want to resolve the login experience Yeah. So let me quickly explain what I mean by this. So now, let me zoom in a little. So now if we go back to the login, we can still access the login even though we are currently logged in. So that's really not a good experience. So what I feel is a better experience is when we go back to the login while still logged in, we should retire, with we should be redirected back to the home page. So I think that works well. And that's that's literally what we want to do. So to undo this, we are going to go back to the login. So let me start from this uh, clean slate. So everything is clean. Now, if we go back to the login page, we should be able to undo this from here. So and the way we want to undo this is to have a use effect method here that we can use to check if the user is still logged in or not. So let's start by importing use effects. By the way, we will not be needing the use contest. Right, so we have that and now we can define it here. Yeah, and in this use effect, we want to check if the user is still logged in. And yeah, I think I can trace this back to the auth controller. We have something like that. So here is the method that checks the auth state. So it checks if the user is still logged in. So what we can do is we can abstract this method and reuse it on the login page. So let's start by abstracting the method. So let's just copy this. And we would add export to it so that we can make use of it on the login page. So now we need to specify the set checking then the dispatch, then props. So let's just get those. So set checking, then the dispatch, 
then the props so we need all those and let's send them here for also so set checking dispatch then props all right so with that set everything should still be okay with the the auto controller and we really don't need to await it because we really don't need to all right so now to the login page we can call the function here as well so check what states all right so we've gotten that then we need to set send in the set checking then the dispatch all right so now we have two ways of doing this so the first way is when we go back to the login screen it has the tendency of showing the screen before maybe checking the auth status then redirecting back or we can just automatically set this to be checking so it will be rolling and if the user does not exist or rather if the user is not logged in then it shows the login screen and if the user is logged in it will direct back so that way the user will not even see the login uh, content at all while the checking is going on. So I think I will go with that flow actually. So to do that, let's have the set checking here like we did for the auth controller. So let's just get it. Yeah. And while checking, we can... So let's, let's have it here. So while checking, we can return the loading screen. So checking. They want to return the loading screen like we have here. So let's just copy this. Then else we want to return this. Right, so we don't need to import anything. The loader already exists. We used it on the button here. All right, so even though we add this, we are not sending the set checking to this particular endpoint. So instead, we just for the set checking, we just want to send in an empty function. We are not doing it there. Yeah, and on the dispatch. So Take, let's take a look at the check out states. So on the dispatch here, we were actually dispatching the user information based on the fact that it exists. So what we want to do here is instead of having the dispatch, we just want to have a function call to a push. So we want to push to the home page. So props.history push to the home page. So that is the second function and lastly so we can actually just remove this and um, this and just have this like this so and lastly on the props so let's send in props and i think that should be it so this should work also so let's test this out if we don't have any error so currently we were currently on the login page and as you can see we are back to the home page so let's try and check it out login so as you can see it were loading before then return back to the home page all right so i guess we've been able to tackle that first part resolve login experience and now if we want to work on the logout so let's implement the logout so if remember we already have a logout function which is this so what we want to do is we want to just make a request at this first part then we can log out okay so we're going to label this an async function so that we can make the request but maybe we don't make it an async function maybe we just call the the sign out endpoints, the logout endpoint, and we just leave things the way it should. So let's let's define the logout endpoint here. So that's the logout URL, and we call this logout. Okay, so back to the auth controller. 
you can make a request to Azure's handler. It's going to be a get method. Then the URL, login URL. Then the token. So we're going to pass token here. Get token. All right. So that's all we need to do here. And we can proceed with the remaining. So if we like, we can wait. So the repercussion of waiting is we probably would need a loader here to check that we're actually logging out before it pushes this. Because if we wait, that means it doesn't automatically push it. So we might have a delay. So I guess we can make decision for that. But I think I can work with what we currently have. Alright, so now the next thing is to map this logout function to the um, image here. Okay, so let's do that. I think we have access to that on the home page actually. So on the home page, yeah, we have access to the logout here. And now we can do is we can say on click because to logout. Right, so I think that should work. So let's test this out. Click. Okay, that didn't work. That was not the expectation. Okay, so I think the logout we got was actually not the one we expect. So we already have a logout PNG. Yeah, so let's just name bear this as logout PNG. And we'll replace the PNG with that. Then we can try to get the real loadout. So which I think we've gotten. Yeah, we've gotten it. So now let's try loadout again. So set checking is not a function. All right, so we omitted something here. So remember when we defined the check out say the other time, we, where we got the latest access token, we record the the endpoint. So, however, we've not recorded it with the necessary parameter. So, let's just put that in, and that should resolve that error. Okay, so that's that's okay. So now let's log out. All right. So there was an error. So push. Okay, okay. So I get get where that is coming from. So on the home page also, we need to send in props. Yeah. So that means we need to extend this props. All right, so hopefully I think everything should be okay now. All right, so from what we noticed there, it looks like the stuff was loading continuously. And yeah, I think we made an error. So we only want to check these states if token exists. So literally the words we are trying to say here is once we logged out, so if we logged out, we would have removed the token and stuff. So then there's no need to actually check the states. So that was why we were continuously loading. So let's quickly resolve that. So if local storage dot get item token name, then that's when we actually want to check states. So if this exists, that's when we want to check states. All right, so let's go back and test. All right, so it's still, it looks like we're still kind of in the same issue. So let's close again. All right, so I think there is a better way to actually do this. So we can actually set this checking as true if the token exists and we can act we can instead compare the check we can use that as a con condition so if it's checking that's when we want to actually check the earth states so we can also make a check so to log out only if the token name exists so if local storage dot get item token name then we want to log out All right 
guys. So since it's okay now, let's reload. Okay, still okay. So let's enable this checked state for log the login. Let's reload. Still okay. So let's log in. All right. So still okay. Let's log out now. Still okay as well. So once more, let's log in and let's go back to the login page. All right. So I think we might have been able to fix that there. All right. So I think we've exhausted quite a lot of time. So we are going to stop here and in the next episode, we are going to tackle the last part, which is fetch users on the platform. That shouldn't be too hard. So actually, I think it makes more sense to undo it with, with also implementing the chat. So we are going to tackle both fetching of users and actually start chatting with the users. All right, guys. So this is where we're going to stop with this episode. We'll continue. Uh, flow in the next one. Stay tuned and bye.